Hello my lovelies, welcome to my channel. Here we are with the tarot series and we're starting off with the Fool. This is a very controversial card. Um, before we get into it, I want to let you guys know this is like my fifth video. Um, they all seem to go over an hour <laughs> and I was thinking maybe I'm trying to pack in too much information for you guys and I understand that some of you guys watching these videos may be uh, just learning about the cards. So I'm trying to facilitate and make it as easy as, you know, learning um, this learning process. Uh, it's going to take a bit. And I am very, very confident that with time, you will be able to learn as much as possible the more you understand the more you learn the more you practice so i'm going to try to make it as simplistic as possible like you guys know i try to make everything very easy very um effortless for you guys to understand and to learn and to practice like i said practice makes perfect so that is the best advice i can give you guys when dealing with the tarot cards now without further ado Let's get into the Fool. Now, as you guys can see here, we have uh, different decks uh, all being represented here by the Fool energy. And the Fool's energy is a, uh, a representation of the element of air. And uh, many have speculated that um, from all the elements, uh, air is the preliminary um, element that comes into or that creates consciousness and of course they're calling me <laughs> give me one second i'm so sorry you guys okay so like i was saying um now before we get into the depiction of the uh the full card and as you guys can see it has many 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 symbols and I would encourage all of you guys to get, or especially those of you guys that are just learning the tarot, uh, to get yourself a deck of the Rider White um, tarot, as it is the most known, the most recognized um, when learning the tarot. Why? Because it's going to make it easier. As you guys can see here, we're using the giant tarot cards, as I feel like uh, you'll be able to see more clearly, and uh, it's more visible than the regular ones down here. Now, every single deck has many different um, depictions of the full. And every single deck is, you know, there's thousands out there and they all evoke a different emotion, a different energy. But knowing and understanding the basics is fundamental. Now, like I said, we're going to be using the Rider White um, tarot in this tarot series. Um, as you guys can see, we have many different ones in the bottom, and I'm going to be doing that for each of the cards. Now, let's take it back to what the full represents, and the full is the number zero. Now, in the major arcanas, we have 21, and the full is represented as a zero because many believe that the full is not part of the major arcana while others believe that it is the number 22 that it is the last card from the major arcanas of course we know that not to be true but it could potentially represent that why because this zero is a representation of nothing the nothingness that comes into something the uh, spark of imagination, the beginning, the idea, the birthing of coming into this physical aspect, this physical world. And above all, it is a representation of purity. And purity is that of, like I said, consciousness. So the zero, uh, some see it as the 22nd card of the major arcana, because they will or refuse to accept it as a zero. Um, so again, the best way of making it uh, as simplistic to understand is see the, the full card as the very beginning and the very end. It is the understanding that every single card in the tarot, 
all 78 cards come from the full. All those 78 cards come within the full energy. Okay. And it is the coming into consciousness and the materialization. So it is in essence, the beginning and the end. Now the zero, Kabbalistically, it is a representation of eternity. It is a representation of everything that has to do with the material. Like I said, it is the idea that potentially progresses and births and takes action and, and it goes down all the major arcanas. But it is also a representation of the new beginning. Much like when we are about to be created, right? And you are, in essence, the egg that is being fertilized. The fool has no gender. The fool is the creation, the beginning of creation. So in essence, if you notice, the beginning cards of the Major Arcana have no sex while as we progress into the higher numbers of the Major Arcana, they will have, you know, their sex defined. So again, we go back to that of the ether, right? Circle is a representation of eternity. It is also a representation of the universe the tree of life. So the fool carries the maximum potential. There are no limits to the fool. It is the child that sees the that sees life with no malice. There is being able to see everything through a child's eyes. And when a child is innocent and pure, they see no malice in anyone. They don't see the dangers of life. They don't see that when learning to walk, they may trip and fall. And the fall may hurt. But again, it, their, their passion for life and for excitement and for learning it's not going to deter them from learning how to walk, regardless of how many falls, how many bumps, etc. So it is the maximal potential of what we can become or when chasing aspirations, goals, when we're going to try to achieve something on a new journey, it is that of taking, you know, blind faith. That is what the fool represents. And like I said, it has no gender. Why? Because it is the very beginning of gestation. It is the very beginning of growing and birthing and coming into this earthly plane. Now, you can see yellow very much depicted in this image, as well as the sky blue white and yellow being a representation of very strong unlimited potential white the representation of purity innocence blind faith the dog being depicted here trying to warn the fool because though the fool is surrounded by beauty and excitement the fool is looking up not aware that he's right at the tip of a cliff that potentially could drive him off the cliff but see the depiction here has a very powerful, powerful imagery. Because we can't see what's below the cliff. 
we don't know if he goes over the cliff, if it's going to go 20 feet down, potentially to his demise. But we also don't know if there are other stones, and this is just the representation of taking the leap of faith, of taking that first step that may lead him to other stepping stones that will guide him to his to the journey that he's seeking out, to his destiny. So the openness of interpretation here will always have a lot to do with the cards that follow or that come before the Fool. But whenever the Fool is being represented or whenever it shows up in your reading, it is a representation of a new endeavor. It is the believing in yourself, trusting yourself, setting out on a new journey. Yes, it may be scary. Yes, we are, you know, humans by nature are of habit. So sometimes it could represent having the need to get out of your comfort zone, having the need to believe in yourself and being confident in yourself. And if you can see here, the fool is holding the staff with a very little sachet bag here. It's not carrying anything that is weighing him down. The fool is all against authority. Anything that puts him in a box, that is not of his nature. His nature is to seek out, to expand, to experience, to learn. The fool, it is the only person that the king will listen to. The jester. And keep in mind, we're saying jester, not a clown. A clown is not of substance. However, a gesture, the fool, has always been in the esoteric a representation of innocence and purity, of holiness, of the Holy Spirit. It is the understanding that we in life may be tested and oftentimes the one person that seems like the fool, the crazy, right? There is holiness in that. The fool is the archetype of chasing your dreams, of embracing a new beginning, of taking that leap of faith. You know, when we hear break a leg, sayings, right, that have the energy of that of the fool, break a leg <laughs> when you're going to you know, do something or take some type of gamble. Going for broke. All of those are, yeah, they seem painful, right? But it also indicates the need to have blind faith. The fool is a representation of the ether. No limitations. Now, when learning the tarot cards, I highly encourage you guys to try to think of a character or whether it's in a movie, in a comedy, um, in, in a show, whatever it is, to depict that of the energies of the major arcana so that it could be much easier for you to remember the essence and energy of that card. As an example, the full card can perfectly be represented like the elf. <laughs> I mentioned that because we're in the holiday season and elf, the movie with Will Ferrell, it is a perfect example of the full energy. 
he goes out of the North Pole to the city on blind faith. It is the excitement that having no limitations, though his experience may be very, very lacking of, to say the least. And sometimes having blind faith in people can put you in very predicaments or dangerous situations. But ultimately, there is no malice in the fool. It is not aware of the dangers because it believes wholeheartedly that everyone and everything has good in it. When doing a reading as an example for business, the full is a representation of believing in yourself, learning to have confidence, taking that leap of faith, getting out of your comfort zone. It challenges you to everything that is of comfortability for you. It's telling you in order for you to grow, you have to expand you have to put yourself out there. In regards to relationships, it is a representation of a person or someone that you may be dealing or that may be coming into your life that is completely different background, whether it's religious or whether it's cultural. When dealing with anything that has to do in a spirit realm, it is a representation of having faith of trusting your path, even if you feel at some points that you may be challenged or that you're a little bit lost. It is knowing that everything that unfolds is where it's supposed to be or where you're meant to be at that point in your life. When we look at the rose that he's carrying, that is white, that is innocence, it's purity. The sun right at the top is represented in white as well as the dog. There is purity, holiness in this energy. The potential is limitless. The shadow side of the fool is being empty headed is being quick to make decisions without analyzing or taking into account calculated risks. It is believing blindly in a person or situation. It is having the need to pump your brakes and to internalize what is happening. Why? Because the fool's energy is a representation of the present. The fool does not care about the past, does not care about the future. It lives in the now, in the moment. The energy of this card it is the equation of stop and smelling the roses, right? Because it's in the present. It is living in the now. As a representation, the full in a reading, if it's representing you, it can represent the type of energy of not worrying if you have $20 right now, not worrying about tomorrow and saying, fuck it, let's spend it right now because we're in the moment. It's seeking the thrill of the now. And it is that of, you know, the full deriving from foolishness, right? Society you know, judges or critiques foolishness. But the fool is also inviting you to be more present. To take the little things and being appreciative of those little things. It is not weighed down. It is free. 
remember the energy of the full derives from the element of air freedom the freedom to express the fool is honest. The fool is direct. There are no hidden motives. There is no shenanigans behind the fool's intention. It is coming across someone in your life where you often question, why are they being so honest? Are they being foolish in telling or letting people know their true intentions? Why? Because we live in a society where everyone has a double agenda, a hidden agenda. And the fool does not. It is innocent from that, innocence from malice. The Fool is a beautiful card because it speaks of unlimited potential. It speaks of new endeavors. It speaks of the opportunity and power behind being able to manifest, being able to bring into the material world that which your desires or your heart desires or you're trying to achieve, trying to make happen. It is the number 11. In the Kabbalah, it is a master number. I encourage you to meditate on every single card. Understanding the basics is crucial and important. But also listening to your intuition and being confident that what comes across with these cards to you and to your heart, if it rings true, the cards are speaking to you. They are showing you their hidden knowledge. The Fool is the very beginning. And as we continue on with these lessons, The Fool will journey through all major arcanas in different aspects, in different times of our lives. I hope you guys enjoyed. Like, share, and comment. Don't forget to subscribe, and we'll see each other next Sunday. Till then, blessings, my lovelies, and happy holidays.